Hey, Mitchell, the wine siren. I am, uh, this is my first live, and we are going to be doing it with um, Valentino Pusnava, who's a dear friend and also uh, a uh, Instagram person, celebrity, uh, saber expert, and uh, wine aficionado. Um, and we have recently been to Tuscany. We're going to be talking a little bit about that visit as well as, and I'm just getting my headsets in. So here. So um, we're going to be talking a little bit about Valle, Valle Picciola, Valle Picciola. And I'm adding Valentino now. Let's see. Might have to send a second request. Oh, there you are. Look at your hat. Hello, Valentino. Welcome. Hello. Hello, Kelly. How are you? <laughs> I'm very good. How are you? All good. All good. Um... <laughs> A little, uh, a small flu, but I'm okay. Oh, no. Well, uh, you sound serious. good. Okay, good. That's the main thing. So yeah. um, I noticed a couple of things on this uh, live, and it looks like we can actually do landscape. So next time we do it, maybe landscape. But uh -huh. I'm also looking at you. I've never seen you in a hat before. And I know you went to, okay, good. Uh, I, I know you went to the hairdresser yesterday and I wanted to make sure there was nothing wrong with your hair. <laughs> no, no, no. Also, just uh, trying out the Peaky Blinders look, you know. <laughs> I love it. Peaky Blinders. All right. Yeah. So this, this is Valentino Pusnava coming to us live from Bavaria, Germany uh, with his new Peaky, Peaky Blinders look. And uh, let's see. So you're the head of Wine Mob right based in bavaria otherwise known as nuremberg ish right exactly. yes exactly correct. okay and um i was just telling everybody we had this beautiful trip um mm -hmm. to uh valle picciola which was kind of blew our minds a little bit so um we were invited along with a bevy of other journalists and notables from italy germany and the netherlands to taste what is being called Grand Cru in Italy at Valle Picciola, which I had no idea what to expect, but because it's the Chianti Hills in Tuscany, right? But who doesn't want to go there? And certainly that Grand Cru uh, little carrot that was dangled was very enticing. So tell me about, um, for you, uh, where did the intrigue start for this visit? Yeah, thank you for the intro, Kelly. So I think uh, similar like you, I didn't know uh, what to expect, you know, um, when I also got the invitation uh, from Valle Picciola. So Valle Picciola, um, it seems that to me they are a very ambitious winery, which kind of rebranded themselves in the last two years, but couldn't really tell people about uh, their, uh, let's say, new image somehow because we were two years, two and a half years uh, in Corona time, right? So it wasn't uh, easy to to tell people about the, the vision, the mission of Valle Picciola. And as I said, I didn't know what to expect, right? Um, I mean, they are located in the southern part of Chianti Classico. And um, of course, you would expect uh, mainly uh, Chianti Classico, Sangiovese-based wines, but I think they took it to a totally different direction and also they took it to another level uh, in terms of uh, creating, producing, making uh, top quality wines. Um, so hence they, they brought in, uh, I think also a couple of years back, this uh, very talented and very visionary winemaker, Alessandro Celai. He had as a mentor uh, Giacomo Takis who is uh, known worldwide as the one of the if the creators if not the creators of the super tuscans so um i think this was the first step from valle picciola the fact that they brought in alessandro celai in going into a totally different and new direction um for a winery located in uh, in chianti classico and absolutely uh, it blew my mind away. I think uh, you had this. <laughs> uh, yes, completely unexpected. Mind completely blown. 
Uh, you know, and we tasted a lot of their wines. I mean, the first night that we were there, we are actually headquartered in Siena. Um, yeah. And for those Italian aficionados, that's Piva Shata, but uh, Siena. And, um, and we tasted their wines and all of their wines were a- admirable. They were fine. Yeah. They were well-made. Um, and I think they're more known for the super, maybe some of their super Tuscans and their uh, Pinot Nero, correct? That's correct. So, um, yeah. Go ahead. No, well, I was please. just going to say, so we're sipping the, the Pinot Nero throughout most of night one, and it's it's satisfying and great pairing, great dinner. Yes. But what happened the next day? So um, I think Pinot, they really, um, one of their, let's say, uh, hidden gems is the Pinot Nero, like you were saying. Also because... I think they they are one of the highest um, in terms of altitude, and Tuscany is not really known for super high altitudes, right? But they are one of the high, uh, they have the highest vineyards, three hundred fifty to four hundred fifty meters. So Pinot Nero, you know, needs uh, a little bit this thermic excursion, this thermic trip uh, with uh, temperatures different difference in temperatures between day and night. So if you have altitude, you can. Uh, you can achieve this. So I think they have potential to really achieve amazing, amazing Pinot Neros for the future. Yes, absolutely. And I think from the standpoint, just to clarify that term that you just used, um, uh, what Valentino is referring to in the U.S. would be called the diurnal shift. And that is the vast uh, degree of temperature that's often experienced in places that are close to the water, to the ocean. Um, So being in in Tuscany, it's a little bit landlocked. So to mm-hmm. have that nuance and have that elevation adds such a dimension of freshness that you can't get it unless you have uh, the height, right? That altitude. Exactly. exactly. So um, I really appreciate it, their, uh, their, their Pinot Nero. And I think going forward, they're going to focus more and more also on this uh, grape variety. And of course, the next day, I mean, was the, the big day, right, on Sunday, uh, where we had the full experience at Valle Picciola, uh, visiting the wine shop, uh, having a masterclass also with a, with a very talented sommelier uh, from India, but based in, uh, in the northern part of Italy. Uh, sommelier in a three-star, um, three Michelin star restaurant close to Lago Maggiore, if I'm not uh, mistaken, Villa Crespi. Um, famous, uh, famous chef there, Antonio Canavacciolo, for the, the ones who follow the Italian uh, cuisine. <laughs> so, um, and there uh, we had the presentation together with the CEO, Alberto Colombo, the chief winemaker, uh, Alessandro Celai, and uh, the talented uh, sommelier, uh, from Villa Crespi, so, and I think we uh, we tried the beautiful three wines that I can also see next to you. Yes, I'm sipping Let us now. Start with this one. Yeah, this one which I'm sipping, the the Chardonnay. So this is a 100% Chardonnay. It's of course the appellation is Toscana Bianco, and it's a 2021 vintage, uh, and I think. Here, the I think both of us, you were sitting next to me during the master class, we had the first instinct that, or the first thought that crossed our mind when we had the sniff and then we had the sip and we, we got a lot of this minerality, this sapidity. Uh, it reminded us of Chablis, so the northern part of Burgundy. Absolutely, yeah. I, I completely got from the style, a Burgundian style, and... And um, I think that looking at the makeup of their their um, soils, the limestone clay with the um, galestro and the albarisi really makes an impact on this wine. But they're doing batonage. So they're also getting, yeah. so the stirring of the leaves, they're also getting some beautiful texture here. Uh, that is unheard of, usually in the Italian white wine. So... Um, the texture was mind blowing. The freshness, and then, as you mentioned, that minerality, a touch of salinity, um, just an absolutely beautiful wine. 
Now, if you go to Chablis, how much are you spending for a bottle of something that feels and tastes like this? Probably 30, 30 euros, so 30 bucks. Actually, 30 euros from from Italy, I think, right? Yeah. But if you go to Burgundy or Chablis, you're paying double, triple, quadruple that. Exactly. Um, and since this is a 2021, the only thing that we don't know yet, and that's why my bottle is unopened, I started shopping for them immediately because I wanted to stockpile a few in my cellar, and I can't find them yet. So uh, shout out to Valley Piciola. We are looking for your wine and trying to buy it. But the reason I'm hanging on to this is I want to see and taste the evolution and the ageability because based on the way that it's made, it really seems like it has a long life ahead of it. I what agree. Do you think? I agree. I think it definitely has aging potential. And you mentioned there is batonnage, so happening uh, once a month. And of course, it was aged in barrique, French oak, 12 months. And it's very deep, you know, it's profound. And it has a great acidity, minerality. And that's what reminded me of, uh, of Chablis. And then the freshness, which you also mentioned earlier, you know, this freshness which which I really uh, like and appreciate uh, in a wine. And you have these notes of apricot, you have the peach, also a little bit of um, ananas, pineapple. So I think it's, it's a well-rounded wine. It has um, deepness. Uh, again, it's profound. It has several layers. And I think in a couple of years, hopefully we can see this evolution. And uh, yeah, great quality. Chardonnay from uh, from southern part of Chianti Classico from Valle Picciola. Absolutely, definitely a home run. And at thirty euros, uh, you need to get as much of it as you can. The challenge is going to be they don't make a lot yet. Like this was no. a test, so we got the front row seats to that beautiful test. Okay, let's move on to the twenty twenty Toscana. Valle Picciola, this is the 100% Sangiovese. Exactly. 2020 vintage. And uh, this is, of course, a Sangiovese Impurezza. So 100% Sangiovese. And um, I called it the, um, when also the sommelier, Nanjit, was describing it. And I told her it's an unusual Sangiovese, right? Because of course, you get, you know, all this, uh, this, the tart note, the cherry, the violet, but it's so smooth, right? It's so smooth. Again, it's very velvety and it's, you don't feel this harshness, this uh, boldness, you know, this, this muscular aspect that the, the, you know, the Sangiovese has in the Chianti Classico area. So yes. that's what I called it the unusual Sangiovese, uh, in my so opinion. I know I totally agree. And this is another one like I enjoy Sangiovese, but I fell in love with this one uh, because of its elegance. It still has some muscular strength, but it of is course. so polished and just beautifully smooth. The fruit is present. Um, the, uh, the tannins are present, but they're so elegant that um, this one potentially has some ageable uh time as well but it's another one that for the elegance the muscularity the finesse that's involved like another home run by Valle Picciola exactly and uh, it has been a 20 months of course in French oak petals and then uh, you have further four months of refinement in the bottle so this is also um let's say one uh one indication of how they managed to, you know, tone down the, the muscular aspect, the boldness of the Sangiovese in making it more refined, more um, with more finesse and uh, more elegant, right? So that's why it comes out as, as an unusual Sangiovese. Uh, if you are used to drinking, you know, classical Chianti Classico uh, Sangiovese wines, it's, this one is, uh, is very special and it's definitely going into the Grand Cru direction, which they aim for. Definitely. And and that is, I mean, that was the premise for the meeting. And my, my thought was, are people going to confuse this wine with a French wine? Well, first of all, based on the price point, 
Absolutely not. There's no confusing it. <laughs> Based on the taste, potentially, you know, there is like you say Grand Cru when you're talking Sangiovese, but we're talking some of the top vineyards in Tuscany, you know, with that that elevation and the diurnal shifts and they've got and the makeup of uh, of the soil, they've got every aspect you could possibly want. So this is another one like very elegant. You can you can drink it alone, or you can pair it with food, and it's a super food friendly. So we absolutely love this one. Okay, we need to move on to the Bordeaux blend, which was a shocker as well. <laughs> migliore, migliore. So with the accent, migliore, not migliore, which means actually the best in Italian, but migliore. Uh, 2019 vintage, and here we have a, a Bordeaux blend of uh, Cabernet Sauvignon, Cabernet Franc, and Merlot. And uh, I mean, this is is their flagship wine. It's uh, it's a fantastic wine, uh, and the vineyard is really uh, located at an altitude between 370 and 420 meters. Uh, we have, of course, the limestone, limestone, sorry, uh, soil, which you mentioned in the beginning. We have clay, you have, we have marl, we have albereze, yeah, and uh, 24 months aged in barrique, and uh, further eight months in bottle. So this is uh, kind of the the style, you know, of of uh, Alessandro Celai. After you age the wine, uh, you know, the juice in in barrique in a oak bar French oak barrel, further refinement in the bottle to really get to that finesse, to that unique touch, you know, to, to that smoothness, to that elegance that, uh, that he aimed for, you know, uh, and, and he, he did it. You have, of course, it's a perfect harmony between acidity, then you have dark cherries, you have black currant, uh, some seductive note. There is a seductive note of vanilla, you know, uh, right uh, at the end. I remember it. Oh, a and, little bit of the toast. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Exactly. Uh, very well structured, well rounded. I think it it's Alessandro managed with this wine to achieve this supreme balance, you know. And uh, he did. You know, the unique part to me was the uh, not only did he achieve this, like sublime balance because it is understated to a point of you fall deeply in love with this Bordeaux based wine but that balance 33% Cabernet Sauvignon 33% uh, Cabernet Franc and then 34% Merlot and I think that that the Merlot that amount of Merlot could be their secret ingredient because we tasted their Merlot and our minds were blown. That was before the unveil of the Grand Cru. So to see it added in here and the impact that it makes with those violets and black fruit and black berries, it's just amazing. And again, a price point. Do you know the price point on this one? I Maybe think it's 50 euros, if I'm not mistaken. So again, you can't like really go to Bordeaux and get something that tastes this authentic for something that affordable, right? Exactly. Not a exactly. good one. I yeah. agree. And um, I called it the wine for the future because I think this whole uh, style of Alessandro Celai, you know, looking at where you are as a territory, uh, looking at what, what soil you have and how can you make the most of it in a new way, right? Uh, not yeah. in the classical way, even though you are in, a, in the Chianti Classico area, right, where there are traditional methods. Sanchovese based, um, he's going into a totally new direction. Let's say going after Bordeaux. You mentioned Bordeaux a couple of times. We can say that he's oh, yeah. going to uh, and uh, he's going after Bordeaux based wines in Europe and uh, and in the world, right? And they have all the the right uh, prerequisites, you know, to to make further uh, amazing wines for the future. Absolutely. They're, I mean, just starting with their location, they're 10 minutes outside of Siena. And Siena yeah. is this beautiful historical town where the paleo um, horse races have been run for hundreds of years. Mm -hmm. um, but they've got this 6,000 square foot facility that is open 
every month out of the year with the exception of January and February. So beginning March 1st, they're going to be yeah. welcoming people and they know the hall. Learning that hospitality aspect of it, they're already set up. The tasting room is stunning. They've got an education room that is big enough to hold maybe 60 people. Um, and the views from whether you're in the tasting room or whether you're being educated and learning at their facility, the views are absolutely spectacular. So I'm going to make it a point next time I'm in Firenze to go back over there and I'll meet you there. Definitely. <laughs> it's just so fantastic. And uh, no, I really think that um, Valle Picciola is the best example of a winery who understood that you need several ingredient, ingredients, you know, to make uh, to make it and to make your story a, a success story, right? Yeah. So they, they have the soil, they have the winemaker with a vision, they also have the, the resources, the financial resources with all the facilities. They trained the staff. I have to say the staff was super professional. Oh my goodness. Super and welcoming. The details. Yep. And this is a 360 degree um, a holistic concept, right? And yep. uh, nothing is random there. Uh, they know what they're doing and they know where they're going, right? So it was a really fantastic experience. They really do. Um, so just a kind of quick overview. These guys have nearly 275 hectares, which translates into 680 acres of rolling hills, woods, and vineyards because the uh, biodynamic aspects, the insects feeding the property and the property giving back and, and sustainability are very important to them. And we're going to talk in the future a little bit more with Alessandro about what exactly that means. But they've got 107 hectares under vine and they've also got 4,000 olive trees and a little lake. So yeah. it's just such a spectacular property. Um, let's see. Is there anything? Oh, we have to talk about the, and we only have a few minutes, but I want to talk really quickly about the pairing experience because they set us up not only with a cocktail party and a two-star Michelin chef, they set us up with his brother, who is also a fantastic sommelier. So we have the Gaetano's. Yes. Gaetano Trovato. Gaetano Trovato is the name okay. of the chef. Yeah. Trovato um, and his brother, and the name of the restaurant is Arnolf Arnolfo. 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 Ristorante. So, exactly. yeah. yes. So, how did you feel about having that unique aspect of now pairing these beautiful wines that we tasted uh, just unto themselves? And they really shocked us. But the pairings for you, how was it? The dinner. What a dinner. What a dinner. That was a spectacular dinner. I don't remember now by heart the menu. I don't have it in, in my uh, mind, but I, I remember. So we had two dishes which were paired with the white wine and uh, with, uh, sorry, with the Toscano Bianco. Seafood, yes. It was seafood. Uh, I don't remember exactly the menu, unfortunately. And then we had two uh, two further dishes with the two red wines. And then at the end, we had a dessert with the Vinsanto. They're also yes. making Vinsanto, by the way, right? And grappa. And grappa. And grappa, yes. Watch grappa out for that grappa. <laughs> saved uh, some lives uh, that night, I remember. <laughs> and yeah, no, I... A, yeah. It was really a beautiful experience. And tasting the... I think it was the... Um, they had a venison, um, also known as deer... Yeah. Uh, uh, entree that was literally melt in your mouth and then paired with the Bordeaux blend that, how do you say this again? Migliore? Mi Migliore. Migliore. Migliore, yeah. With this, am I frozen? No, so your screen is black now. <laughs> okay, note to self, put your video on do not disturb because i just had a phone call come through and that's why i'm black now uh, okay. anyway okay so um i think we've pretty much covered it what do you think what did we yeah. miss i think uh we, we 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 tried and we managed to outline 
the let's say the most important parts of our of our uh, beautiful experience with Vale Picciola. There are many more details. Uh, of course, we were there two days, but it felt like a week because it was so intense, and we we did so many things, right? So we tried to give you a little bit of a, a hint of the a summary of of the main events that happened during those two days, and. Uh, yeah, I enjoyed this, Kelly. Thanks for having me. We should do it more often on YouTube. We absolutely will. We'll be back very soon, as soon as uh, Valentino and I get our schedules together. Exactly. And a big thanks to the people at, is it SM Studios, as well as Valle Picciola? Yes. Um, for correct. their hospitality, their organization, and treating us like superstars. We really enjoyed the experience. It was perfectly organized, uh, everything. So thanks again to SMS Studio and to, to Vale Picciola Winery. Absolutely. Okay, well, I'm going to say so long. Ciao for now, my friend. Thanks and for thanks. having me. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Keep wine mobbing. See you soon. <laughs>